All right, I am starting the recording. We may have lost Precious. Um, hopefully, we'll be back. So um, it's great to have everybody here. Welcome to the April 5th uh, DEI, Chaos DEI Working Group meeting. If you could add your name and look to your right and add something that you see when you look to your right, it might be many things. Could just be a wall. That's okay, too. <laughs> Anything that you want to add would be great. Um, so we have quite a bit on the agenda today. Um, I'm not sure how long all of these things will take, but we'll just start working our way through. And if we need to get to things uh, next week, no problem. So would anybody, I'll start with if anybody would like to volunteer to lead the DEI working group meeting next week. We can help with putting the agenda together, but it would mostly just be kind of in leading the process by which we get through the items. You know, and maybe even coming up with a prompt of your own. Anybody? I can do it if no one wants to, but I don't want to take that away from somebody if they're wanting to do it. No problem. <laughs> and if anybody would like partner with Elizabeth, but uh, that would also work. You know, we could do like kind of a co-lead. So if anybody would like to take it on, it's a pretty friendly group here. So pretty I'm easy. sort of half, I'm sort of half back on my okay. right now. Um, okay. I could do it. Okay. Well, um, Elizabeth, code, so code, I'll code, I'll, I'll be, I'll be back up. I'll be on ready five for the following week. Okay. That'll work, Sean. Thank you. All right, great. Um, so let's see, I just like to say thanks to Sean and Enoch for spending, I think, considerable time and effort making sure the the badging bot is working. And it sounds like Enoch's pretty confident. It looked like in Slack that this is gonna be a pretty good long-term solution. Yeah, he had, we, we had it working and he realized that it needed a bigger server. And so then we had to change the IPs again. And okay. I, Enoch did really the bulk of the work in terms of have he had to figure out, I offered to help, but he, he was, he's just a go-getter and he had to figure out the whole SSL certificate on a website thing, which is not trivial the first time you have to do it. Right on. Well, I really appreciate the work um, from everybody. So thank you, because that'll be really nice uh, yeah. as we move into the next rounds of, of reviews. And I'm glad that it, it we never had to move to a manual process throughout all of this large, uh, you know, kind of <laughs> kind of review period. So that's that's awesome. Well, and I th I think it's actually gonna what he did and what he learned is is going to be very helpful in the uh, bad the project badging. Oh, effort perfect. As well, perfect. we we're gonna have to do the same thing because we're gonna have some kind of connection to GitHub somewhere. Okay. And, they require that too. That, that's why he had to do it. So we're good. Okay. Wonderful. And, Great to hear. Um, as a, oh, go ahead. Oh, and and as a as a backstory, one of the, because GitHub posted all their SSH keys to the internet by accident. That's what really caused all of this to break. Um, okay. So just so you know what happened. I don't know that backstory, but okay. Yeah, it's a long <laughs> one, so I won't bore you with it. But it's I it's am, broke breaks a lot of stuff. I am just <laughs> mostly glad that it's working. Yeah, <laughs> out of all the things. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have so the newcomer experience metric. We have a couple metrics here that I just want to talk through. So the newcomer experience metric still has not been added to the website. So Kevin, I know, is going to take a look at that. Elizabeth, could you take a look at that too? I think it's ready to go, but for some reason, it's just not showing up. Yeah, for sure. That's okay. Weird. Like it's all good to go in the repo, you know. Okay, thank you. Just a little logistical stuff. Um, so then we have a couple, we have event location inclusivity and public health and safety. And these have both been released. Could we remove this at that point? I think we just can do this in the GitHub repo. Is that right? Um, yes, that is correct. Okay. 
And then we should probably just take that out of the That's template. not exactly that's just not how we're doing things anymore yeah yeah because we yeah. our reviews are kind of here and we're not really i do i think it is probably worth we can remove it from the template but i we may want to have like um a monthly cadence or not a monthly cadence but it's like every six month cadence where we're like here are the six metrics across the entirety of chaos that were released over the last six months you know yeah like we could put it out to general and if you have any comments on those metrics we would love to you know receive your feedback um i'm not sure how we would receive that feedback but something like that where we still like kind of say these are the ones that were released in the last six months if you have comments please take a look and provide feedback and matt we do still keep track of the date of the last review or release right we in the do. Okay, yeah. so that would be an easy thing to surface every yep. or so. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, what do you do? You think that's a good idea that maybe we do it twice a year, or we just say? Do we even need to do it that much? We could do it once a year. We could say, in the course of twenty twenty three, here are the metrics that were released. We encourage you to take a look. Okay. So, um, would anybody like to remove that? In the GitHub repo? Yeah. This is for health and safety. It's removing its event location inclusivity. You could probably do it right now. Yeah. I just, event I was just, I was event just location thinking. inclusivity and public health and safety. You know, this part, the metric yep. is a release candidate. Yeah. Public health and safety and event inclusivity. There's two things, so I have to write them down. They're also in the minutes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sean. I got to go with the way I could keep track of things. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it some other way. No problem. Yeah. Um, hi, Katie. Could somebody drop the minutes in the chat for Katie? All right. So, Sean, you're going to do that right now. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing that right now. Okay. Um, looking at. Uh, I'm in work group DEI. Again, event location inclusivity yep. and yep. public health and or public health and safety. Okay. Um event locations is a metric that we have kind of been working on. It's here, it's kind of this in progress. And oh, I'll just take care of that there. Um this is where it's at right now. So you can click on the link. I don't know what people's thoughts are on this metric. It seemed like it, it to me when I was looking at it, honestly, just briefly before we came to this meeting, like it's, I really like the idea of the metric. It just seemed to kind of like become kind of vague down at the down at the latter part of the metric. So the idea here is that we're trying to ensure we're asking projects like the chaos project to think about where they host events globally so that you know that um, can improve inclusivity for folks that are located. Uh, for example, like uh, Ruth running chaos con Africa, you know, folks in Europe, folks in in Asia or Australia, wherever it might be, that we can just try to improve access to the events that we run. So I like that a lot, of course. Um, but then, I don't know, I just kind of, what are people's thoughts as you look at this metric? I'm a little confused as to what it is that we're trying to measure. I know that we're looking at events like where they are, but I'm not sh sure like what we're trying to achieve with the metric, I guess. I, I think it's helping ensure that projects are thoughtful about where they host events. Um, that's my, that's what I think. My understanding of it when it was, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. 
My understanding of it when it was originally discussed was that um, at the time there were states and there were places that were having issues with like oh. bathroom accessibility for trans individuals and were having um, like gendered um, inequality and having an inclusive location bridged that, but because that was discussed at Open Source Summit North America last year during one of the chaos things. I think that might yeah. be this. So we have event yes. location inclusivity. Maybe we could lump or roll in the other one into I, this one. That seems like it would be rolled together because they seem very, very similar. They're measured globally, but you want them in inclusive locations. That feels like it should just be a part of the same one. Just part of this. Mm -hmm. So maybe would anybody like to take on an action item that would kind of take a look at what's in here? You know, like what we have and what we feel isn't captured here. See what I'm saying? So it would be, the action item would be to take a look at the event locations, Google Doc. I can take that. Okay. And then just a lot on add, that. like it might be as simple as like just a couple lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like I'm gonna, for example, move these three things over mm -hmm. into that it might not be very challenging. And add. I mean, I guess I can see the argument that could be made that this metric event locations just looks flat out at where they are. Doesn't yeah. make any judgment at it. It just looks flat out. You know, here's a list of where they are. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, what do you all think? Like, is it, does it merit a separate thing without judgment or anything, just a list? So like it would just be a map of where, like this, like a map of where events are located. I think that was the original um, intent is like just to make a list. That was how I read it. Yeah. But on the, on the other hand, in the other um, metric, you would need to make a list. <laughs> so, but you're making a list and then also comparing it to the places that are on, um, you know, that might be flags for folks. Right. So like this is a prerequisite. Yeah, it's almost like a maybe a filter or, or something. I don't know. You could just say it's like um, step one for considering this metric is looking at event location equity. And then your second step is making sure that those locations are inclusive. And a heads up, I'm taking a back burner on any sort of action items for a while. I was part of that in Indeed layoff. So I am like in 100% move ahead mode at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I we lost a lot of good people over at Indeed. Oh, so, I okay. there, there's a company that is meeting with us today. Um, us being, they are they wanted me to come over and then they're like, do you have anybody else? It's like the entire OSPO got laid off. Yeah. Oh, can we hire them too? <laughs> so the entire OSPO team from Indeed has a meeting today with this company to see if they want to import the team. Okay, okay. that'd be great. So it may happen, we're not sure yet, but we're having an exploratory meeting. If that happens, then I'll be set again and it will be good. Let's hope that happens. Yeah, for sure.
Sure, I'll take that severance check and bank it. <laughs> um, so maybe to to Katie's points, Elizabeth, when you're looking at this, just see like I mean, it you don't have to force it like, but it might be very obvious that it fits pretty well, you know. Um, and so maybe you could just come back next week and be like, yeah, I tried and it didn't work or I tried and it was actually really easy, you know? Yeah, no worries. That sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I don't know. We're going to continue on. Thank you, everybody. Um, I, I don't, I had put this in the common working group meeting too, or in the Slack channel, um, oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Not this yet. So I had an action item to update the README in the DEI repository to remove um, the reference to the DEI mailing list, which I did. And then while I was at it, I also modified the maintainers and contributors list a little bit. So if somebody could take a look at that and provide comments as necessary. We had talked about, you know, how we have those, there's two things. So one is we have maintainers, then we have core contributors, and then we just have contributors in a lot of our readme's. And we had talked about simply removing that list of contributors, just because it's kind of an unmanaged list of all of the people who have participated in the chaos project. And it's just not something that we can track real well. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And so getting rid of that, that list and what we include in the readme is only maintainers and only contributors or core contributors, basically people with merge rights. That makes sense. Okay. So then that leads, if somebody could take a look at that pull request, that would be great. And then that leads to something. This is what I had posted in um, the common channel. So I'm suggesting, at least for our working groups, a pretty, a more simplified readme structure. <clears throat> and I don't know if this is really appropriate for DEI, but I just wanted to bring people's attention to it here. If you could either click on it or take a look. But basically what I'm doing is I merged your pull request. Thank you. The name so basically all we say is this is the name of the working group, like DEI or risk or whatever. We have a name of the working group and we can list a time if we'd like and via Zoom and then a link to the agenda meeting minutes, the agenda and meeting minutes, this the document, you know, this document. A brief overview, which we have, I think, in a lot of the readme's. Um, we would remove the focus area tables. You know how a lot of the readme's in the working groups have those focus area tables. We're not doing a real, as, as some of the working groups are getting rid of focus areas, some of the working groups focus area table is not consistent what's actually in the spreadsheet. The suggestion was just to link out to the spreadsheet for that particular um working group mm -hmm. so like if this is risk it would just you know link out to that <laughs> like you want to understand our focus areas and the metrics we're working on here's the link you know go out there um check out our released this would be whoops And I'm proud to say, check out our released metrics at, at, and then just give people a link to the metric site. And then a pretty simple new contributors. This project is open to anyone interested in the topic of risk or the topic of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and then a link out to the getting started for new contributors. Maintainers, a list of approximately two people. I should also add here.
hey matt yeah uh, sorry going back up to the released metrics <clears throat> <Yeah>. like <clears throat> sorry as i die um <clears throat> this is the um <laughs> this is the actual link i think to the um the knowledge base which i think is a better link than the metrics sure as i think that metrics is the old list if i recall i guess i could have looked but done So I'm just what I'm trying to do to get on this readme is just kind of point people to things we have published other places. Like we, the readmes have been really not maintained real well in terms of like how we're updating our contributor page, how we're updating our our spreadsheet. Like I'm trying to just point to the documents that carry more consistent information. And then the documents in this repository are under MIT. And then this was the suggestion in terms of copyright. One of the possible suggestions from Don that instead of putting a copyright date on it so that you don't have to keep updating that all the time, this was one of the options provided by the Linux Foundation by saying you can just for copyright, just put contributors to the chaos project. Do people have thoughts on this? I'm just trying to like, maybe this is a, you know, an issue of kind of lowering the, the or, you know, improving access to our working groups, just really trying to simplify the stuff that's in the readmes. I, 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 I yeah, I, I, I like simplifying the readmes. I think it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, I'll bring this up in common. I think maybe I'll bring this up in the community call next week as well, just to continue to show people. All right, so if you have comments, you can add it to there. Um, let's see, chaos codes of conduct. Sean, you have two pull requests that are open at the moment. Yeah, you know, I gotta tell you, I did the one, I got rid of the, the uh, code of you conduct did. from Augur. Yeah. And like it doesn't show me the code of conduct anymore like it's the file there's not like a file listed it does take no, me to the code yeah. it does take me there if i click the code of conduct link that's it that's okay. and that's that, and that's okay i still pass github muster there all right yep. that's what we're doing i got nervous after i didn't see the file anymore and so but nope. now all right okay so i just have to go it's a, I know the other two repos or three repos you're talking about. Well, they're right about, here. So. These are the only two that are left. They're in the minutes. <laughs> I have two pull requests just removing that document. Beauty. That's much easier. And then at that point, uh, when you just merge those, we're done. So yay, all green. All so right. all of our chaos codes of conduct now are consistent. Across all, they they all simply point to the .github code of conduct. So that makes me happy because now we have again, kind of like the README file. A and those are those are merged. Thank you. So just a, a single point of of reference across all of our repositories. So I'm really happy about that. All right. So done and done. Thank you. All right. Um, Look at we're just we're gonna move through this what seemingly was a fairly long agenda. Um well this might take a little while, the issues. So the community survey that we had run, uh, seeing Ruth, if there are any updates on that at all. Yep. Ruth and Christy and I have started to work. We we're supposed to work on it last last Friday. And um I had food poisoning and slept through the entire day and slept through the call. Um, I was quite ill. <laughs> I feel like you've had food poisoning a couple times this year. Um, yeah, I think I did have it once, like really right at the beginning of the year, but th yeah, this was in Iceland and this one was scarier because I was having trouble keeping water down. All right. um, so yeah, I, I have to follow up with them now that I'm sort of back, not sort of back, but actually back and, and uh, can okay. schedule things. But uh, since I missed it, I think it's kind of on me to try to put that back on the calendar. Okay. So okay. I'll do that. All right. Well, we'll look for some updates. 
next week or in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll stop here for a second and see if anybody has any questions so far kind of on the agenda. What we're doing. All right. Um, I did, this came up last week. So right now our issue list is, is pretty good. Um, I know that like this bottom issue, uh, Anita is working on that. The newcomer experience like that'll be taken care of once that's on the website. So a couple of these will like, they're either knowingly in progress or, um, will be removed. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was these metrics that have the light blue and yellow labels on them. So right now, we these, these have been sitting here for quite a while, if you can't see, some as old as July of 2022. So some are approaching three years old, um, which is old. <laughs> for a yeah, 2022, it's, it's like right. de decades but, ago, isn't it? I'm sorry, June 2020. Oh, that is a while ago. Even even worse. So um, there was a lot going on in June 2020. <laughs> there was, but we, we don't we don't ever really seem to come back to these. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. But I completely understand. I do hear and know what you mean. I've seen stuff like this in littered in different. Yeah, uh, different and they're, they're they're really great ideas, but we don't <clears throat> ever seem to 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 kind of work on them like that. And the same sort of holds true like in in here we have this like considering stuff you know yeah. so they're, they're basically the same as these you know with a little yeah. less context in here yeah it's well you know i i think the um i think the argument for archiving them is the argument for keeping them has been hey these are useful things and it would be good to get to them but we don't because there isn't a demand for them. And, but let's keep them there because we listed them before. The problem is anytime we come back to something like that, we've forgotten what it was all about anyway. Oh, so you're so, right. Some of these have like, like so, some conversations. We just have to reread and restart. Yeah. And, and so perhaps, perhaps the right thing to do is to close the issue and say, this is a, you know, something, it's great metric. Uh, good work, and uh, but we, you know, we haven't had uh, a community support for actually building it yet. So um, we're going to close this for now. And um, if if you're able to help begin working on it, you know, please reopen the issue. What are other people's thoughts to Sean's proposal? I I like that. And I also think if we're keeping ideas, we should keep them all in one place and that's it. So that if and when we do have some free time and we want to look at them, we know where to go. That's just a little bit confusing right now how some are there and some are here. So I would maybe say link to the spreadsheet or something. Okay. Where we're going to ho hold this idea for now. And then if we go back to the spreadsheet, we can clean some of those out too. Or roll them into other metrics as well. And I guess we could um, in the spreadsheet. Like we could, I think, like even, and yeah, maybe under remarks linked to that issue or something. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say too. Yep. It makes sense, but you also are gonna, we're going to want to document somewhere that people can go and reopen those and have in point to that list of them, so that people know they have permission to go and reopen something that wasn't finished. Okay, I'll take a. I'll do this. I'll. What I'll do is what um. What I'll do is I'll cross reference each one of these metric ideas with the spreadsheet. Because I think we have some of them in the spreadsheet would be my guess. So they're actually probably located in both places. Um, and then in the spreadsheet, I will link to the issue as well. So in the remarks column, I can link to that issue. And then I will close the issue um with these kind of these comments that says thank you here's a link to the spreadsheet you know if you want to to see the issue over there and then to katie's point this issue can be reopened it remains um tagged you know 
with metric idea. So we could always just, we can even just search closed issues for metric idea tags. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are people okay with that, that kind of approach? All right. Okay, thank you for the feedback on that. And it's probably something we wanna do in all of our working groups, like common as well. I don't know if common even has any metric ideas, but risk, actually that's- Yeah, true. you know. I, I think DEI probably has more of these things open, but yeah, I agree, we should do so. Just don't maybe put that on your risk agenda this week, Sean, just to yep. double, double check. I, don't, I think we have a meeting next week. Or, or yeah, it is next week. You're right. Yeah. Um. Okay. So then, honestly, I have just one last thing on the agenda today. Um. Every time I put a link to Slack, uh, Zoom in Slack, I get this request. And Elizabeth smiled because I she gets the exact same request. I think. I I get it too. Yeah. What do people think about trying to add Zoom to Slack? I mean, does that make things easier for people to join? I don't have a problem adding Zoom to Slack. We it, we use it pretty extensively, and yeah, I, I, I no problem adding that. I don't. No I think it's actually a useful add-on. It's not like a fringe tool that we occasionally use and will irritate us. I guess the only thing is, as long as it doesn't send me yet another notification separate. <laughs> okay. We we had Zoom attached to our team our team Slack yeah. and. It doesn't, we still got that same, are you sure you want to go away from the um, page thing and or go to a different directory or whatever? We still got that, but we were able to start Zoom meetings from Slack. That seemed like the only difference that I ever saw. Okay. So nobody had a real problem with it. It doesn't sound like Katie. No, nobody had a problem with it, but it didn't really do anything other than allow you to start a Zoom meeting from Slack itself. Okay. You typed I'll... in like colon Zoom or whatever, and it created an automatic meeting for whoever you were chatting with. Okay. Oh, well, maybe we need to look at that then. Like, because I don't know that I'd want that to be possible that somebody could in Slack just type colon Zoom because would it just take the chaos channel? I don't know. It just created a general Zoom room Like, because if we would say, hey, can we jump on and talk about XYZ? Somebody would say, sure. And they, so-and-so started a Zoom meeting and it has invited you. And then you can just click on that okay. link and it goes into a Zoom room. I don't know if it actually was there I think it might have been connected to that person's Zoom account, or it okay. was a premium feature of Slack. It was one or the other. Okay. Um, how about I? I'll look into this a little bit more. But from uh, Gilbert and Precious, I think they both were like interested in this. And any ways I think that we can make it so that people can join the calls, if they just have like the Slack app and it's just really easy to join via Zoom and it's just one last step. It might be a good thing, but then, I mean, you're always the, when I put the link in, you can always just click that, can't you? Right yeah, on. that's how I always get to a Zoom is just by clicking on the link. So like when I'm like, the meeting starts in five minutes or Elizabeth's mm -hmm. like, the meeting starts in five minutes, here's the link, that works just as well, doesn't that's, it? That's what I've always clicked on. That's how I always thought people got to Zoom meetings. <laughs> Via Slack. Well, yeah, the, or like, you email it out or like the meeting starts in five minutes here yeah. on this or it's in the event invite. Okay. For, that was just standard operating procedure to okay. me. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. That sounds good. I'll, I'll take a look at it. I, I just figure I, part of me just wants to get rid of that message <laughs> one, one way or the I other. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that particular message. Before. I think it's for ad administrators of the the org. Okay, then, because, yeah, I have never seen that message in Slack. All right. Okay. Um, 
Well, with that, is there anything else that people would like to chat about today at all? If anybody knows of any OSPO openings that people can look at if they have to, let me know. Right on. All right. Well, with that, it was great to see everybody. And thanks, everybody, for joining. It was great to have you all here. And we'll see you at the next chaos meeting, whatever that might be for you. Have a good one. See you. Bye, all. Bye.